Hey there, my name is Alex and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 4, Episode 2, The Lion and the Rose. This will contain spoilers, so if you've not seen the episode, stop watching now. In fact, quite a few big spoilers for this episode and one very big spoiler. Anyway, spoiler warnings aside, I'm going to take a different approach to it this week, and instead of analysing the entire episode, I'll rather state the things I liked and disliked, and if you've seen the episode, I'd like to know what you think. But let's get started, shall we? And I'll start with the negative, so that I can end on a more positive note. That said, here are the things I did not like about this episode. And starting with the first scene, in fact, the hunting scene with Ramsay, Theon, and original character, Donut Steel. I get that Ramsay is a bad person, and I get that Theon has been broken by him, do we really need a fairly lengthy sequence just for shock gore value? On a character none of us have any emotional investment in? I don't really care if some random lady is getting chewed on by doggies. As with much of this storyline, I feel that portraying it in a more subtle fashion would work a lot better. How about Ramsay, Theon and the Shield from The Hobbit returning from the hunt and talking about what good sport they had, and then gradually revealing their game not to be deer or boar, or whatever else, but a person. I don't really understand the importance of this scene, as it didn't really tell us anything new, did it? Now, a change that I'm not sure if I dislike or not, but am nonetheless perplexed by, is Jamie's sparring partner, if you can call it that. Now, as we all know, Golden Hand the Just is short a real hand, and in the books he's determined to become as good with his left as he ever was with his right, and to further this, he begins to train with Illin Payne, the executioner who made Ned dead, and who also happens to be short a tongue, meaning he can't blab to others about how weak Jamie currently is. I can understand changing this for the show, but Bronn? Perhaps it is to show how much Jamie trusts Tyrion, and of course, Tyrion is the one who talks him into it, seemingly, rather than Jaime having the determination himself. But sellswords are the type to brag and talk about their exploits. Still, if you want a skilled swordsman, who you know most likely would be sympathetic to your cause, what about the Maid of Tarth? Did Jaime completely forget about Brain? He knows firsthand that she knows her way around a sword, couldn't they have at least brought that up and had him dismiss it because of his pride or something? Or is it because Brian might not remain in King's Landing for long, and they didn't want to bother with the complications of then finding him a new sparring partner later on? Again, this isn't really something I disliked, but I think the logical step anyone would make is to have Jamie ask Brian to spar with him, rather than a random sellsword he's never met before in his life. The Shay and Tyrion storyline is never something I've been interested in, whether it's the show version or the book version, and it took what I'm sure is a very predictable twist this episode, so there's honestly not much to talk about there. And last but not least, the wedding feast. A few things here stood out to me, starting with Cersei. Why was she being such a turbo bitch, to coin a phrase? You would think that she would be happy for her son, and in a good mood, generally, but instead the show decided to focus on her jealousy? Are we going to forego her prophecy in the TV show? I might be getting things a bit mixed up here, but I thought one point of it was she's supposed to suffer when she's at her most joyous, or something along the lines of that. Either way, her demanding that the leftover food go to the dogs instead of the peasants struck me as plain stupid. You might argue that Cersei is plain stupid, and well, yeah, that's a that's a very valid point, I suppose. Her talk with Brian, though, I didn't mind that right up until she blurted out, "Do you love him?" out of the blue. That was way too obvious, and Brian's reaction is kind of how I reacted too, to be honest. For starters, I don't think Brian and Jamie's relationship is as simple as that, and I don't like how that scene was written. I mean, treat your viewers with a little respect. There are many ways to show the seeds of jealousy without being so blunt and brash. Again with the wedding, and again with Cersei, 
and again with hammering us with obvious information, is the scene between Oberyn and former Queen Regent Lady Cersei. This actually reminded me of the time when Littlefinger essentially threatened Cersei to her face way back in Season 2. Instead of trusting that viewers would figure out that Littlefinger acts amiable and pleasant to everyone, making it plain that he's no threat, being able to field no soldiers and such. Instead of that we get a moustache twirling villain, and instead of trusting that viewers will remember that Oberyn doesn't like Lannisters, they start battering us about the head with it. Remember this guy from a whole week ago? He really hates Lannisters. And he also makes a not so subtle threat concerning little Marcella, which is odd seeing as she's treated so well in the books. And even if he knows that and means her no harm, the threat itself is a foolish move. We know that he doesn't like Lannisters. Please stop shoving it down our throats every episode. One last thing, and a very, very small nitpicky detail. The giant lion from which the Five Kings emerged? It seemed too modern a creation for my tastes, and a little out of place in the setting. But I have no idea if such a thing could have been created in the real-world equivalent era and time setting of Westeros. So let's move on to the positive. Bran's scene was something I enjoyed. The change to make Bran a little more wild and surly than his book counterpart was done well, I think, and the tension it added to the scene, it paid off. And speaking of tension, the scene between Ramsay, Fionn and Roose was likewise one that I enjoyed. Now granted, it was one hell of a blunt way to show how loyal Reek is, but I think that fits with Ramsay's persona. It demonstrated well the dynamics between Bastard, Leech Lord, and Broken Prince. It is a little surprising to see events from the fifth book taking place right now though, and I would have liked to see something with Roose sneaking past Moat Kaelin, which is, you know, that's obviously not in the books, and I think they could have included that, it would have been kind of, it might have been fun. Whilst I didn't think too much on the first half of the Stannis scene, I enjoyed the antics of the Baratheon family. I enjoy the relationship between Stannis, Selyse, their daughter, and Melisandre. It's awkward, and Stannis' actor nails it, I feel. I wasn't quite sure what significance the Melisandre and Shireen scene has, but I must admit I like almost all the original scenes we get with the Red Witch. She is one of the few characters I prefer over her book version, and what with Stannis being one of my favourite characters, I'm obviously very excited to see what they do with him this season. By all means, his moment of glory. As for the feast, well, where to start? The production values on Game of Thrones continues to impress. The sets, the costumes, the props, all great. The gradual build-up of tension between Joffrey and Tyrion isn't handled perfectly, but the actors did a very good job nonetheless. And if I had to pick which one did better, I would probably choose Joffrey. And I think a lot of people are overlooking Sansa. She was portrayed very faithfully to how she was in the book. You might think she was wooden, but that's exactly the point. She's been through so much at this point that she wears a blank mask, which can be a hard thing to do as an actor, where your first instinct is often to overact with your emotions. And of course, how can I not be happy that the Purple Wedding's name was rather apt? It was quite an alarming shade of royal purple, but a colour I'm no doubt sure many of us were extremely pleased to see.